pop out this chat. Yeah, let's give everybody oh, a, shit, I gotta do that. a couple seconds here to join up, and then we'll uh, we'll get started since we're on a time crunch. Hannah, at the end, I will turn over the uh, the mic to you for a minute. Sweet. Uh, probably after we do the whole end of the show thing, but before we take the break, like for take titles. The, the titles thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Oh, yeah. I haven't even played anything on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> it's been one of those weeks where, like, you come home from work and you're like, mm, no, I'm too tired. Yeah, I spent my whole week, uh, let's see, I built a bassinet. Nice. Uh, I put together a one of those, uh, it's like this combination swing and rocker. Uh, so you can kind of take, like, the little base out of it and put it on the floor so it's like one of those little bouncy chairs oh that's cool and then you put it in the thing and it's like a mechanical like swing have you seen those little mechanical swings it's like a pedestal and their thing sits on it it does like a figure eight or a I random guess. yeah those are cool huh. uh we did not we did not get that fancy with it that uh, sounds expensive <laughs> yes well i saw something and then there's everyone's fitbit on top of it because they're oh yeah they're <laughs> <laughs> that's funny lazy shits and then um, we put together, I, well, I put together the pack and play and put, like, the car seats, uh, bases in the car and stuff. Oh, yeah. It's been a, it's been a baby-filled week. Yeah. But we're, we're pretty much good to go, so. Nice. You think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, you guys ready to uh, kick this thing off since we Absolutely. Are, yep. uh, have a time crunch here. We've got a couple of people in chat anyway, so I think we're good. All right. Hey, folks. <clears throat> All right, let's get started in three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of That Video Game Podcast. I'm your host, Boston. Let's go in around the room. we got Knobs. hey And we have the Hannah. Hey. Uh, let's just get right into it. Knobs, what have you been playing? Alrighty, well, we had another week of Monday Night Game Night playing Battlefe Battlefront Star Wars. Um... Yeah, we're really bad at that game. Or at least I am really bad at that game. Or, may or maybe you guys are good, but everybody else is no. really good. Mm. No, I think everyone's been playing that game a lot more than us. Because uh, yeah. I had just unlocked a perk. And Ooh. I didn't know that was part of the game. Oh. <laughs> so now it makes sense why I can pump in like six or seven rounds into a dude and he doesn't die. And I get two. Because uh. I don't have my defense perk up to level like whatever it is i think three so i just unlocked that we'll see how this plays out but oh, yeah we're we're a little man saturday night we were pretty aggravated yeah uh, playing that game i bet uh so that is and gratuitous dirty star wars talk continued and Naturally. it's hilarious i mean we have a lot of fun poking fun of star wars yeah a it's, lot of it's, it's a pretty good punching bag. As much as we love it, it is. It's, it's, a it's weird bag. because it's a galaxy far, far away. Yeah. Mm. Uh, all right. Um, I'm attempting to continue to play Fallout. I don't know how much more I have in me mm. to, to to try and muster this game because it assumes I know a lot and I know nothing. Yeah, that's even and, as someone who played Fallout Three. That's Not sort of the experience, intel. unfortunately. Yeah. And, like, I am just wandering aimlessly. And, uh, yep. Like, you know, aimlessly, like, I'm trying to get to these spots. I am hilariously outgunned at every encounter where I am in just full panic the entire time. Like, that, even try... What? That's the part that's so surprising to me is I... I don't know if that maybe that's the experience I took from Fallout 3 to Fallout 4 is kind of how to survive at the beginning of the game when you don't have great guns, you don't have great armor, like you don't have mm -hmm. this stuff? Oh, I feel like a raw nerve in a dentist's office. Like, it's just, you're <laughs> assaulted from every angle. Huh. Like, I, I just, and like, I, I can't, I can't handle it, my dog being attacked either. Like, I am just, it, it just adds to the franticness that's going out of my mind. That yiping noise that dog oh, makes is, is worst. murder. Mm -hmm. Well, I love dogs, and then hearing this thing suffer, I'm like, I gotta stop this! That's why I switched him out for Nick Valentine at the first opportunity. 
Mm -hmm. Not only is Nick better because he has a gun, Mm -hmm. uh, but he also doesn't make any horrible yeah 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 noise when he gets shot. Oh, and then he's there limit like limping around. You're like, do you want to use a stim pack? Of course, I want to use a stim (laughs) pack. Let me help my buddy. My last one. Yeah, so doing that, ran into some people. Uh, the crazy lady at the the whatchamacallit, at that little diner in the middle of nowhere, like this weird trading post mm-hmm. where I guess this kid's hooked on junk or something. Oh, yeah, the uh, the jet addict. I came across yeah. that, too. Yeah, so... I, I ran into that. That's a good I, one. Fallout. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Totally blew that dude's melon up. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, maybe I did do that where he's like, hey, you gotta go in, in there and get my money. And she's yeah, like, like, no, sure, man, buddy. this guy's being a jerk. This guy's got my kid hooked on jet, and, you yeah, know... That was, he's th- that's, a bad man. That was an interesting one, because I thought that yeah. was going to go somewhere, and I killed that dude, and she's like, all right, thanks. Oh, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, well, we're done. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Come again. <laughs> hey, you want to trade anything while you're here? Like, no. Dude, yeah, I just sure, killed someone out. for you. What do you... Give me something. Do you have any 10-millimeter <laughs> ammo? Oh, you don't? All right, see you. <laughs> oh, the ammo. I don't know what to use in this game. Just a little bit of everything. Whatever you have the ammo for in the early part of the game. Yeah. Oh, man. Use the laser musket if you ever got that. I'm almost out of the laser musket rounds. Oh, yeah. okay. I've, I've, got a t- I've got about 1,538 rounds, so yeah. I'm rolling a 38. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm not rolling that rich in bullets, so every encounter is, is very calculated and, you know, saves scum a lot. Did you pick up the scavenger perk? Uh, I did. Okay. That that will it, that snowballs very quickly. Like at the beginning, it's sort of like, well, that doesn't that doesn't really seem to help. But like, if you pick up ten bullets, you'll pick up fifteen instead. Mm. Well, uh, all right. Well, I guess I should go back and see if I have applied that because I'm sure I've died at some point where it resets all that stuff back oh, to the right. save. So mm, I might have double check on that one. But I, I really I hope you zero fun. With I, this right I now. hope you stick with it to see if you do have any fun. Like, if you get, to, have you been to Diamond City yet? No, everyone keeps telling me I need to get to Diamond City. You, you might want to just. City is. You might just want to go there. It'll be on your map if you make that quest active and make mm-hmm. it the only active quest. Um, oh, you, I'm that, so confused with everything that's going on in this game. So I would go. Here's my suggestion. I would go in and just make the Diamond City. Any quest that says go to Diamond City, make that the only active quest. Look at it on your map and just go that way and just get into Diamond City. Um, At that point, you'll pretty easily be able to get Nick Valentine. At that point, you'll basically have two guns, and that that should help a ton. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Because right now, I literally feel like the dude that got out 200 years after that, after, out of the vault right now. I feel I am that worthless and don't know anything what's going on. Mm, yeah. And that's one of Fallout 4's biggest problems. Is it yeah. just, there's no. I don't. What Are you playing on normal difficulty? You can change it at any time. I, maybe I think I am playing on normal. I put it down to easy for a little bit until you get over that first hump. Like, the hardest part of Fallout games is unfortunately the beginning. Because there's way too many enemies, they all they all seem to shoot really well. Like you just mm-hmm. need to fight some stormtroopers. Like yeah, that's all. I just need the stormtrooper setting. But yeah, it's just it it's it was really it, like it really like I always keep getting stuck in the places and just that was yeah. mine too. Where I'm like crouched and I back up into something. And I was like, how? Well, I can't get out. Like they're just yeah. full of me, full of holes. What am I? I'm dead. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, like I don't know how many fights I've gotten on these stupid fire escapes like i'm always like yeah right, there he is i got him and then there's like three dudes from down the street just pick me <laughs> off i'm like where, where, where were you where guys you, yeah mm-hmm. just come out of a building like what's happening here or right, the landmine in the whatchamacallit <gasps> killed me about four times in the theater or the drive-in oh, oh yeah. yeah like all right they, all right so i'm creeping up I'm like where is this thing <laughs> you can highlight it with vats Great, because I should have known that. <laughs> well, so here's the bad part. I wish they would have told you. They should tell you, like, oh, you just got killed by a landmine. One, you can highlight it with vats, so keep an eye out. Number two, you can disarm it. Once mm-hmm. it starts going off, you just hit the button to activate it, which is probably A on the Xbox One. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Fallout. I like using those to my advantage, though, especially if they're right next to a car, because you blow up that, and then the car catches, 
and then the car blows up. Yeah, because cars out have anything nu- nearby. Cars have nuclear reactors in them, so yeah. they they really go. Yeah, it's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, all right. So played that. I played a ton more Luminous, and I keep brick walling myself at one point yeah. six million. Yeah. <laughs> like I get to that point, I get to like you know where you have your the parts you need to hit. Like you know. You're building up. You want to get your block count really low for the really fast levels. Yes, because they're coming. Oh, yeah. So, you know, that second really orange level with the train that goes yes. really fast. So that one's like one benchmark. I hit there. I got through that like with a breeze. I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm in good shape. And then you I kind of got myself in the trouble. Then a really slow map came in, cleared everything out. Then I got the staticky blue one. Yep. I got that one done. No oh. problem. On the turn. I bricked out on the red and gray the red one. And white. The red and white. Yeah. And I don't know what wrong. Like, I blinked and it was full. <laughs> the, like, the, the drop delay is, like, gone on that one. It's like the minute a, a one pops up, it's going to drop. Oh, jeez. Like, I, I just couldn't notice. Like, all of a sudden, like, I was doing really good. Like, I was do, working the U. Like, working yeah, the you got to work the U. I was working the U shape. So, like, a high level Luminous player. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're working the I'm working the U shape. That all of a sudden, like the clear time was messing messing me up. Where I was kept getting clear, I was kept clearing half of the square. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I got these spires going like every other square. I'm like, what happened? Like I was doing so good. <laughs> it just all fell apart. And then frustration came in, and I'm like, I'm gonna lose. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lo-. I'm like, <clears throat> and like it, once you get to that second like that second turnaround, like you're guaranteed almost two mil. Like from yeah. that point, because yeah. then you can work everything down and then start getting the uh, start getting the, the the single color or the hundred percent clear bonuses oh, and start yeah. milking those. That's the best. Which, That's what I do all game. Is I just get it, I keep my 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 tile count low, and I just milk that all clear and that single clear. Oh, see, I see. I do it. Like I play so dumb. Like it's either <laughs> like really planned or really reactionary. Mm. So. I will, I will, I will build lines. Like, okay, I'll go from left to right and build up like alternating colors the whole way. And, out. Then, and then you'll try and, and get then one of those I uh, will special bl- blocks. Blast out! No, I mean, screw special. Specials are worth. Oh, yeah. yeah, I hate those things. All every one of them, like the auto clear and the randomizer. No, they they never help me. The randomizer late game can be a lifesaver, but it can also screw you. Oh, it's a curse because every time I get a light line uh, a randomizer when I'm like really like I've checkerboarded too much of the screen <laughs> and and uh, and I'll and I'll get it, but it's always on a slow line clear. Mm-hmm. So it does all that. It does the drop, but everything's still so full, and I'm still like, come on, just get, come on, line. Get. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I almost threw it across the room after that. <laughs> I was so, I was furious. Everything was going so well, so well up until, it it, up until it wasn't. Yep. That's how that game goes, man. But yeah, so like I'm trying to figure out a way to score the most amount of points as fast as possible right now. So that's where I've been building one row, one row, one row, one row. So then I'll go right here. I'll clear, 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 clear out. And then it'll carry the last bit of blocks into the next line count. Mm. And then that drops down again. And then it's like 28 to 30 lines you get credit for in a clear. Yeah. With wow. the times four. Uh, wow. With the, sounds... with the times four um, the multiplier. multiplier. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. That's the good stuff. Yeah. So I'm letting out trade secrets here. Yeah. Yeah. I might have to take advantage of those trade secrets. <laughs> but yeah, it's just like it's like ba 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 ba, and I'll do like six lines, like like uh, like vertically straight down, and just just start pounding that score, and then and then it's like all right, rinse and repeat, do it again. Then then all of a sudden it turns into these are coming too fast. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. I gotta go. It starts clear, clear, clear. I'm in trouble. But yeah, so played a lot of that. Way too much. And a lot of free sell. I've been playing a ton of free sell on my tablet lately. Like <laughs> how much free movie, sell again? Like I'm playing like like my, I'm free selling my tablet. Like granted, I've only had it like with this tablet for like maybe six eight months. Like mm-hmm. I've played like seven hundred games of free sell. <laughs> wow. 
And the only one that I, ha I have one loss because I messed up and, and like dropped my tablet, caught it, and closed it out. It's the oh. only time I, I have a, a blemish on my record. No! Yeah. I'm like, oh, well, shoot. And that happened yeah. like in like the 20s when that happened. Now I finally have, like, I'm like, like 600 and out of 601 games or something like that. Man. So it says my clear rate's 100%, but I look at the numbers, I'm like, no. Uh, no, you know. no. You know the truth. But uh, but anyway, so in the course of putting the new controller through all its paces, and that thing is wonderful, by the way. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if it's my game of the year. Um, <laughs> the monster. <laughs> <laughs> um, wouldn't be surprised, beep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for anybody that doesn't know, uh, right before this, we recorded our our top ten for 2015. So, wonder what knobs we'll be talking about on that show. Right. <laughs> um, but anyway, so I've been playing like uh, you know the shooter at you know Star Wars and whatnot, and I'm playing with the taller rounded top for the motion, and then the tighter like uh, normal like grippy version for the the right stick. Hmm. And then uh, hair trigger on the right trigger. I haven't played a shooter like that, but I was using it for DOA, which I thought was a great thing. I can put this thing through its pace. Like oh, an yeah. Yeah. Fighting game there. Um, surprisingly, the yoke one, the, the disc for the D-pad, isn't as responsible as I hopes it, hopes it, hopes, as I hoped it was going to be oh, uh, huh. for counters and whatnot. So then I switched it out with the regular D-pad and... Yeah, it's on the money. Nice. Like nice. I think it's more of a tensile feeling <clears throat> on your, what's familiar and what was new. So uh, it, it was. I'm but, glad that 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 controller isn't just good for racing games and first person shooters. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you're you're able to find this combo of pieces and parts that is working for other genres. Yeah, it's. Is really cool. Like yeah. I really like I really like this controller a lot. Like it just like I I think it's more than just a like a luxury item. Like it's it's not just hey hey look what I it's not a status symbol. Like it is yeah. a functioning piece of hardware that is well put together and feels fantastic in your hands. Like the the button presses, the D pad, the sticks. And just the way, like you pull the all the, everything pulls off vertically, and everything locks in magnetically. So it's like this Ooh. thing you get right in a sink, and like oh, nice. it sucks it right down in there. And it's, it's like such building a, awesome. a robot where you're like, yes, <laughs> you're like yes, Gundam. Like it's great. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we played uh, we played a little bit of uh, a DOA five last round, and man, am I rusty at that game. I bet. <laughs> a little out of practice. Oh, way out of practice. Um, I think, <laughs> poor Tom. Uh, one of the one of the rounds, like I swear, I was seeing the ma the Matrix, and I was <laughs> countering every, and I just pummeled him. Oh and man! And he's like, he's like, man, dude. I was like, ah, you know, Sorry. I saw the Matrix that round, and then he yeah, some, me up the next at two. some point you don't see the code anymore. Yeah, <laughs> I just I just see blonde brunette. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but uh but yeah it was it was really good um that game's still fantastic and i do not understand i still to this day how that game just gets such a bad rap yeah it's such it a great such, fighting game it is such a solid fighter yeah and it is glorious to look at oh mm -hmm. yeah um but other than that like i haven't really played much on the on the mobile front either like at all so that's that's pretty much it for me all right, Hannah, what, what um, do you have on your plate? I got a whole lot on my plate, but not a whole lot of games, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, me uh, neither. <laughs> I played a little bit of Rocket League on Wednesday. Uh, me and Binary Viking uh, hopped on for a little bit, and I discovered since I, so if you haven't noticed, my background's a little different here. Uh, we finished the nursery, so I had to sort of move out of there. And I uh, had to relocate the router as well, which means it's no longer next to my PS4, uh, which means uh -oh. I'm no longer hardwired, which means I can basically no longer play uh, Rocket League Online. Yeah, man, uh, that wireless chip in the PS4 is just garbage. garbage. Uh, 
I was getting just pink. put a little dongle in the back of it. That's gotta help, right? God, I, I I don't I actually don't think it can do that. Yeah, I don't think you can do it with that one. I'm actually con- like I'm considering moving where it is just so that I can actually play Rocket League again. I ran a really I ran two really long network wires for my PS4 and my wife's PS4. Yeah, I'm considering I, doing that as well. <laughs> my PS4 can see my access point from mm-hmm. upstairs to downstairs, and it won't yeah. connect regularly. Yeah, wow, and it's That's not so how much, terrible it is. <laughs> like the speeds are still fine. It's the ping. It introduces yeah. some crazy amount of uh, delay, and so my pings were in like the 150s, 160s, oh, and I'll have to I'll have to upload the video I took because it was hilarious. It just it was just funny to see the ball stop in midair and then change positions without anyone touching. <laughs> Teleport. <laughs> it, pretty much, yeah. yeah. Uh, the way that game tries to keep up with the lag is just insane. Yeah. Uh, so unfortunately, it's been about three weeks here. Rocket League on Wednesdays is uh, but not a whole lot of people showing up lately. Uh, it's the holidays, you know. Holidays, so you know. December's uh, rough. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and keep it going though. Uh, so. It's all right. You must create more pylons. Exactly. Yes. Um, I played a little bit more Fallout Four. Not a ton. Uh, probably another five hours into that over this course of this week uh, slash weekend. Uh, I finally caved and decided to mod it just just a little bit, just to, just mm-hmm. a couple of things. Make, I don't make your life to... a little easier. Yeah, um, I got rid of the fact that sprinting doesn't reduce action points, uh, so that now I can fun. unlimited sprint. Yeah, uh, I removed encumbrance because screw that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh yeah, I... that's that's fun. Yeah. Like you're picking up all the stuff in the world. It's like oh, I can use that. I can use that. Oh wait, now I can't move. Yeah. You know, that's the one thing that I'm excited about mods coming to Xbox One and I think PS4 at some point. Yeah. Is just those simple mods. Yes. Where it's like, all right, I want to, I don't want to change my interface color, but I want to change my flashlight color. Yeah. That, that's not an option. Cool, now I need to mod it. You know, I don't want to deal with encumbrance because everything else is fine, mm-hmm. just not this. Or like, I just want to have a million caps. Because yeah. this is my third time I'm playing through this game, and I don't care about money anymore. You know, yeah. like, or you just want to have fun and turn God mode on on consoles. You know, it's exactly that, that sort of thing. Well, and like the other couple ones I did, uh, I got a mod that drains the power cores just a little bit more slowly because it was just tanking it every time I use my power armor. Yeah. Um, I uh, there's another mod out there that lets you exit and enter the power armor more quickly. Oh, nice. Uh, which is great because that takes forever. That animation is way too long. Yeah. Um, there's a, another mod that allows the terminal, like the text display on like computer terminals, it just speeds it up. Okay. Because just it how it displays. Forever. Yeah, just speeds that up. Yeah. Uh, and then there's the the one mod that I really wanted was the full dialogue interface, and it shows you for each of the options you're about to pick, all the dialogue you're about to say, instead of having to wait until the button press. Yeah, I saw that one, awesome. and I was like, man. Yeah. Wish I was playing on the PC. <laughs> so just a, just a few mods here and there. Uh, I did a couple of really interesting... Uh, I went into a couple of buildings in Boston, and, man, there's some cool stuff happening in that city. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I went through... The, so the Boston Public Library, that was a oh, fun one. Oh, that was fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now you can and, turn in overdue books. Yes. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> It's it's actually there's actually I think, a thing. There's a magazine you can get yeah. by turning in overdue books and getting tokens. Yeah. Uh, and I also did the Hubris comics. That was fun. That was also cool because you like get that. a couple of really interesting outfits uh, <laughs> yes. and weapons <laughs> yes, that you can use, which I'm very excited to try out. Did you get the? Uh, were you doing the Silver Shroud mission? Uh, a, no, I just happened to get there actually. Oh, because that's one. that's a place you have to go into to do the Silver Shroud mission. Oh, okay. Have you been to Good Neighbor yet? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Good Neighbor starts this Silver Shroud mission. Okay, so, so there's I'm I'm missing a thread there. I was just kind of like, oh, that's a cool little thing. Yeah. All right. Nice. But yeah, that game's still pretty good. Uh, I'm enjoying my time with it. I don't know how much uh, how, how regularly I'm going to keep playing that one at this point, uh, just because so much other stuff going on, you know? Yeah. Um, but I also, this week, decided after some news that came out, uh, I-, I wanted to take a real quick refresher look at Final Fantasy VII. 
Oh. Uh, and I'll tie this back in a little bit later, but there were some reactions to some news that came out this week that I just wanted to have a little better basis for. Um, yeah, some stuff we will probably be talking about in the yeah, story section. Yeah, a little bit here. <laughs> yeah. um, so I don't want to talk about that too much. But Are you uh, playing the PS4 HD one? No, no, this is the uh, the raw PS1 version on the Vita. Nice. So, um, Only yeah, the I rawest, got... most natural, organic Final Fantasy VII. Yes, locally sourced, of <laughs> yeah. course. Farm to table, Final Fantasy Farm VII. To ta- Farm to table, Final Fantasy VII. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this game that I, th- I think a lot of people have forgotten about um, that I would like to refresh some memories on. So how, we'll talk how, about that later. How far did you make it? Uh, I think I'm like uh, I think I'm like the sector the sector five slums uh, about to do the second bombing run. Okay. Yeah. So just that first little bit, those first couple yeah. hours. So yeah, that's pretty much all I played this week. Uh, boy, we're gonna have a real fast first segment here. <laughs> yeah. I uh, was working nonstop this week, uh, and I have just been playing a lot of buying of Isaac Afterbirth and Rebirth. Um, I'm having a lot of fun doing the daily challenges on PC. Um, yeah. I've been streaming those, uh, and, and you can check them out YouTube channel for those. Um, I really like the daily runs because, and I, I like them more than what Spelunky was trying to do because, <coughs> excuse me, um, I, the great part about Bonnie of Isaac is there's so many different characters and each one of them is so vastly different from each other. And I like that the daily run forces you to play as a character you may not play as all the time. Like yeah. I very rarely play as Lazarus and I very rarely play as Magdalene, but there's going to be a daily run where you have to play as Lazarus cause that's the one you have. So you kind of have to figure out how do you take that character's specific perks and, and bonuses into effect and try and break the game in in the way that will benefit you the most. Yeah. Um, NYC Badger is in chat saying the the difficulty progression is amazing. I I got him onto playing Binding of Isaac because of my live streaming, um, and he's he's kind of in the 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 part that I like the most where you're like unlocking all these powerful things and you've got all these bosses and you're just you pick up this new thing. And it's like wow, great! This one item totally breaks the game. Yes. <laughs> um, and then uh, so I'm having a lot of fun with that I really can't wait for this to come out on uh, PS4 and they just announced more DLC for Rebirth um, oh, wow. Afterbirth Cross which <laughs> not only will give you tons more items in the game but will introduce Lua modding support Ooh. a uh, stage builder like a tile based map builder yeah, and you can change which items show up in the game. So, you know, like like my favorite example, worms, where you can kind of manage all this stuff. You can say, all right, well, I want to specifically do a run where, you know, the devil room items are these items that wouldn't normally be there, but everything in the item rooms is just bomb related items. I want to make mm. it as hard as possible, or I really hate this item. I never wanted to show up in the game for me ever again. Wow, that's so impressive. It's crazy that they come out with this big DLC and they're like, "All right, see you guys later. Have fun." And a month later, they're like, "Actually, uh, way more content. One more thing. It's not, yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's their one more thing. They're like, actually, one more thing. Uh, we have like a ton more stuff for you. <laughs> so, yeah, that game is great. Mm-hmm. And I'm still playing uh, Rebirth on PS4 because I just have one more thing to do as the lost i just have to beat the dark room as the lost and pick up the items i unlock and i will have platinum this game wow i'm so close i've had so many runs this past week that have gotten me so close the last one last night i got all the way up to satan and i just got stomped and that was the end of my run oh <sighs> i will do it and it's going to be great, and I will be finished. It will be glorious. And then Afterbirth. I, I feel like I have to platinum this game so Afterbirth can come out. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. we've gotten no word on it, so I feel like they're waiting on me, like, tapping their watch. Like, <clears throat> my boss. It's just waiting. Like, it's... <laughs> patch is ready to go. Um, yeah, I can't wait. Um, but yeah, I, I spent 
almost my entire week working 14 hour days so uh, leaves very little time for work or for play uh, <laughs> so let's take a break all right God, my throat ah. is killing me today lots of talking oh Ooh, we're pretty good two and a half hours right yeah the top 10 is almost two hours yeah it's a lot of content especially since uh our predictions is looking pretty thin <laughs> yeah, I, yeah don't worry i'm writing mine still so right. yeah and anybody watching uh uh on live stream put some predictions in go to, yeah. go to the forums make sure you're not set at the end too what are you doing yeah. good call what are you doing huh I'm trying to podcast here. That's what I'm. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last night I got to heaven with Isaac. Killed each other on the last shot. No win. Oh, that's the worst. Because <laughs> you actually you don't win until you like, hop so in the chest. Fucking shit over. Oh man, God, bonding of Isaac is so good. Nice. Yeah, I see try. you. Hmm. But I love you. <laughs> I'm a dog. I'm a dog. My dog voice. Dead eyed stare all the time. What? He just loves looking at you. What are Who you doesn't? doing? What are you doing? I don't know. Uh, Coach Jamal, uh, yes, predicting delays does count. Uh, sure, yeah, that works. All right, uh, you guys ready to uh, knock out the second segment here? Yep. Yep. All right. All right. Ready in three, two, one. Welcome back, everybody. We got releases this week for December 14th, 2015. Summon Night 5 for the PSP. I'm very excited for this. A wada, wada, wada. Summon Nights. Uh, <laughs> boo. Uh, I do boo. believe this works on Vita. Um, nice. And I, I like I the hope. Summon Night series, so I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right, Parappa the Rappa 2 for the PS4. Yeah, uh, PS2 two. classics on PS4 are a pretty good experience, so... Cool. Check it out. Check, check, and check it out. Minecraft <laughs> Wii U edition for the Wii U. <gasps> Shock. It'd be uh, funny if that came out for any other system. Yeah, for the Vita. <laughs> for some oh. reason, they decided not to allow you to craft stuff on the Wii U gamepad. Why? Uh, so there's no point in no this game then. But they're like, but we have voice chat, and it's like, what? <laughs> I, the, you, you have this screen. Why wouldn't what? <laughs> Great job. Uh, uh, all right, let's move into news stories. EA seems what? to be getting way more serious about esports. Uh, they are launching an esports division to be led by Peter Moore. Ooh. He's going. Uh -oh. He's going to be the. Uh, he has been the chief uh, operating officer uh, since August of 2011. He'll now be the. Oh ah, crap! I just lost his title. Oh, I don't remember. But uh, it seems like they're really they're really getting out there and kind of talking to a lot of esports teams and you know talking to Twitch and MLG and all that stuff and trying to figure out hey how can we take our games that are competitive and make them way more esports friendly. Uh, it seems like sort of from the expectation of the people playing them, but also the people broadcasting them. His um, title is uh, Executive Vice President and Chief Competition Officer. Chief Competition <laughs> Officer. That That's my new favorite title of the year. Is, that's pretty great. Oh, I'm CCO. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, Chief Content Officer? No, no. Nope. No. Competition. Son. <laughs> That's pretty pretty wonderful. Yeah. Uh, some Final Fantasy VII remake news here. Uh, some some interesting things that that came out this week. Uh, kind yeah. Of first and foremost is that it's a it's now going to be a multi part game. It seems like they are really not using the word episodic. <laughs> and that seems intentional. Yeah. It, it basically their their description was. Final Fantasy VII is huge, like yes. from a development and game size standpoint. Don't forget, it came out on three discs mm -hmm. uh, on the on the PS One. It, it it's a big game. Uh, yes. They are saying like, hey, if if we had to make this game, it's gonna either take us a really long time, or we're gonna have to cut out a lot of stuff. 
So mm-hmm. we'd rather kind of take this game in chunks mm-hmm. and give it to you and then start working on the next chunk and then give you that. So kind of... I, I, I'm surprised the, the, the analogy they're not using is we'll give you disc one and then a little bit later we'll give you disc two and then we'll give you mm-hmm. disc three. You know, like yeah. they should be using that. That kind of makes sense. In, but I'm kind of curious to see where they're gonna cut that. <laughs> yes, and that's sort of my big thing. Like the reaction to this was a lot more negative than I sort of anticipated. Yeah. Um, and like the reason I decided to go back, uh, a, a developer I follow on Twitter, uh, he's the guy. Uh, his name's Robert Boyd. He oh, yeah. uh, so he developed um, the last two Penny Arcade uh, RPG games. Yeah, Breath of Death he also, Seven. He also did Breath of Death Seven yeah. and Cthulhu Saves the World. Yeah. Uh, so he's made games. He's made RPGs. He's working on Cosmic Star Heroin, which looks really great. Yep. Um, and his his exact words here, I've got the tweet pulled up, is FF7 was a massive game made possible by using relatively few static 2D screens for each area. Yep. Going episodic for the 3D remake makes sense. Yep. Uh, and I'm pointing to that because, and I, I replayed it just to confirm this, a lot of those backgrounds in FF7, yo, those are pre-rendered. Oh, and they're, they're just absolutely. slapped down. Uh, so they... The actually 3D modeling and going through and making. So if you look at the, if you look at the trailer, uh, you look like you're going to be fighting. There's not going to be a transition into like a, a, a generalized like representation of the area you're in. You don't have the swirly. You're, whoosh, yeah, you're going to you're going to be fighting in those areas. So that actually completely changes the design requirements of those levels of those areas. So you have to rebuild them with that in mind. Uh, and you actually have to render all these areas now. Well, and, and part of what they're talking about, too, is they want you to uh, explore more of Midgar. Yes. So they're going to take... Midgar is probably, let's say, 15 pre-rendered backgrounds, and mm-hmm. then some small ones for interior uh, building ones. Yeah. But there's not a ton... Like, each one feels really big. It's a really big image. Mm-hmm. But if you think about... Final Fantasy IX was the the only game on uh, the only Final Fantasy game on PS One that didn't have pre rendered backgrounds. Yeah. If you think about pre rendered backgrounds were so in vogue then, like the Resident Evil series, Onimusha, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. Final Fantasy, all these games did it because you could make you could focus on other stuff. You could have a team of artists make all these backgrounds and then smush these polygonal characters on top of it, and it mm-hmm. looked fine. You know, it looked good at the time. Now it looks fine. Yeah. Um, but going through and making all that stuff, I'm really surprised that a lot of people are are that upset because mm-hmm. if if you don't get it episodic, you either don't get it on this gen or you don't mm-hmm. get it at all. Yeah. Uh, and I am more than happy. And like everyone's, everyone keeps using the word episodic. Everyone's jumping the gun and going, "It's going to be episodic." Yeah. They haven't said that. They have actually very clearly stayed away from that phrasing uh we're doing phrasing again yes yeah uh (laughs) um i i don't think they're gonna do an episodic series i don't think you can do episodic with a known quantity like final fantasy 7 right uh obviously they've also come out and said that the remake is not just a straight port they're not just gonna take the story and move it over they're gonna add stuff they're gonna change stuff i'm all for that uh, and I think doing it multi-part like this will put some of the surprise back into it as well. Yeah, because uh, um, the director, Katase, came out and said, like, look, there are going to be things in there that are going to stay the same. Like, the example mm-hmm. he gave was Cloud will still cross-dress for Don Corneo. Yeah. Like, that's a kind of tent pole of Final Fantasy VII's craziness. But if you look at, like, the uh, the dolphin jumping minigame, they'll probably mm-hmm. cut that out. Hopefully. Nobody cares about that one. So, and he specifically said, like, we don't want this to be leaning on its nostalgia. Like, yeah. we want to take Final Fantasy VII and kind of change it to to be more representative of maybe what Final Fantasy VII should have been. And hmm. that sounds okay. It sounds worrying at the same time because I'm sure somebody's favorite. You know, secret cutscene will get cut out or <laughs> some dumb thing that somebody says in some town will get cut out and that's a bummer but I'm hoping I'm hoping it doesn't turn out like what George Lucas did to Star Wars 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, because... Bantha's like... <laughs> yeah, like, there's always that concern of, like, man, when you get in there, are you going to change too much about what... Uh, NYC Badger says in chat, at what point is it not Final Fantasy VII? Like, how do you balance the line of, we want to take this core game that people love and kind of improve it and maybe streamline it a little bit, because Final mm-hmm. Fantasy VII is crazy. Yes. Um... But how do you keep the... What is the spirit of Final Fantasy VII? And then how do you keep that intact? Yeah, uh, no, that's, that's definitely a good question. I think yeah. if anyone's going to do it, it's going to be the you know these two guys. Yeah, exactly. I think it's in good hands. Yeah, so. I'm not worried about it. I, I'm definitely cautious. I don't want to say, like, oh, yeah, this is definitely still going to be great. Uh, no, they could definitely screw up the multi-part thing. There's a lot of things they could it's easily... It's square screw. in 2015. They have a yeah. pretty good chance of screwing it up. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But I'm. It, it, it's not making me go, oh, well, I'm never going to buy a square product again. It's like, yeah. no. They're just trying something different to try and rectify some of the issues they've had in the past. I think yeah. they're making trying to make a legitimate play at trying to get you content faster than they have in the past because like let's face it that is square's biggest problem as a developer just time Uh, just they don't have enough time uh that's probably that's most likely why they chose uh unreal engine for this i was just gonna bring that up yeah yeah so they're gonna run on top of ue4 so i mean if there's anything that should allow their production pipeline to move faster is probably unreal engine yeah hopefully and i the last thing they talked about was because a lot of people are concerned aren't really concerned but had a lot of questions about the battle system is mm-hmm. that they said they're kind of taking ATB their active time battle system and kind of stretching it more towards Dissidia where it's sort of this third person action hack and slashy thing but mm-hmm. still keeping some of the tactical quality of it and you can still switch characters it sounds a lot like the crisis core system it does which was fun so I think if they can mm-hmm. kind of uh, take that and mature it. I think mm-hmm. that could be. I think that could be pretty fun. Yeah, just pull the leveling system off of that, and you're fine. That leveling yeah. system was garbage. Keep the keep the standard leveling of Final yeah. Fantasy VII. You'll be fine. Yep. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, Lucasfilm says they're not. They haven't given up on Star Wars thirteen thirteen. That's oh, exciting. Stop it. And I read this. And I was like, <laughs> what? Stop it. Uh, Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy says we don't want to throw any of that stuff away. It's gold, and it's something we've, we're definitely spending a lot of time looking at, pouring through, disgusting, discussing, and we may very well develop these things further. We definitely want to, uh, end quote. Yeah. yeah, but I it are you are you just gonna make a a TV series out of it? Mm, like that'd be a bump. the Star Wars TV stuff is really good, yeah. but I kind of wanted that cool like almost Assassin's Creed hitman thing they were talking about. Yeah, it's, yeah. that's what it should have been. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. I would really love to see it almost in any form at this point. I want to see what they were planning, even if it ends up being non-interactive. Yeah. Um, but, man, I would still love to see this game get made. Yeah, it just it sounded so cool, like this seedy, underbelly, bounty of hunter Of course, yeah. yeah. Give it to Telltale. They can do it. Sure. Yeah. Give it, to, give it to Don't Not. They could do it. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Valve and HTC have announced their Vive headset will be launching consumers in April 2016. Have we confirmed that's how you pronounce that? Like for sure. Vive. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I think I didn't yeah. think it was Vive. No, I don't think it is either. But like, I've, I've, I don't think I've heard anyone from Valve actually say that word. What, five? Uh, I yeah. thought I had watched the announcement video, mm. but I don't remember. No, they just okay. spell it out, V-I-V-E. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Project That's V-I-V-E. That's what we're about, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so 2016 is going to be really interesting for VR because they are all kind of coming out in March and April. Yeah. Except for PlayStation VR, which I think is coming out in the later, the latter half of 2016. So yeah. and Samsung Gear VR is already out. Yeah, that's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be a fun conversation to have. No, I need to put this giant headset on my face, honey. I need to not pay attention to you or the baby because you know VR it's big right yeah. now. The people <laughs> need me. <laughs> no, it will trick you and it'll be a baby monitor app and you're stuck there like oh. no. 
Oh, that'd actually be kind of awesome. <laughs> you! One eye is your game, the other eye is baby monitor. Oh, that'd be real disorienting. Yeah. I don't know. And so any of this VR stuff, could that be converted into, like, augmented reality stuff, or... No, it seems like most of VR and AR is staying separate because the VR doesn't have a see-through. It's not see-through at all. Yeah. Yeah, but like you were putting like the Samsung, like you put your camera in the front because I know HTC has always got two cameras in the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be easy enough that you could stereoscope those those images. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I don't yeah. know. I, I'm I, that would just destroy the battery life. But sure, yeah. I, at this point, you know, as as a pundit, I'm not really doing my job super well because I at until a lot of this stuff comes out I kind of don't care about it because I don't believe it's going to work yeah as well as they're saying it will so a lot of this stuff where it's like can it do AR or is it too processor and video card intensive to display something through a camera through the thing you know it's I, I don't know hopefully but I don't know I think augmented reality is probably way more fun than VR. I think AR point. is way cooler than VR. Yes, I agree. Yeah. I, th I think that's a really neat idea. Because it's a lot cooler to say ver uh, augmented versus virtual. I don't know. Aug reality versus Aug that virtual Augment reality. your reality. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I need a life bar. <laughs> Just for your life. <laughs> yeah. V winning. Check. Yeah. I did something at work. Yay. Like little um, lifetime achievements. You wrote your name. Good yeah. job. 20, 20 XP. You um, got the date correct. Check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, next news story here. Uh, uh, Bungie has come out and said that they are, they really aren't focusing on monolithic DLC packs for Destiny right now. They're focusing on event-based models. Yo, that's probably a really good idea. Uh, from a money standpoint, probably, yeah. Uh, right now they're doing the Sparrow Racing League, which I've played a little bit of. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty good. Um, I'd like to see them expand it because it only has two maps right now. Um, which oh, so is, it's like Star Wars. Basically, it's like Star Wars pod <laughs> racing, basically. Hmm. Um, and I, it sounds, you know, th they need to figure out, shockingly, they need to figure out their marketing, their messaging around Destiny. Uh, a lot of stuff, it seems like they're trying stuff to see what works. And they'll say, like, hey, if it works, it'll come back. If it doesn't, it's going to go away forever. <laughs> yeah, um, it dies, it dies. Yeah. I, I think it's really interesting because they're they're saying, like, hey, if you bought Destiny, if you bought the Taken King, we want you to experience all this additional stuff for free. We don't want yeah. you to have to buy another DLC pack for 15 or 20 bucks just so you can do all this new stuff or you know, you shouldn't have to spend five bucks to get this Sparrow Racing League. And I think that's great because they're they're matching it up with their Eververse trading company to do real money shortcuts. Yeah. So if you want this cool new Sparrow, go ahead and spend five bucks. You'll probably get it. Mm -hmm. If you don't, keep playing it and you'll probably get it over time. Well, it's um, also limiting the amount of fragmentation in the, in the, in the community, too. And I yeah. think that's really important for something like destiny because there's not more content on the horizon mm -hmm. <laughs> like the 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 biggest reason why i've stopped playing is there's nothing else coming out and you know bungie has continually said we're okay with being the game that somebody plays for a little bit puts down for a couple weeks or a couple months and then comes back to it later like i put it down after i ran the raid once because i don't want to keep running it but i picked mm -hmm. it up for sparrow racing league and I'm probably going to play it for a week and then put it back down for another couple of months until something else comes out. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's really interesting, but I hope they figure out a way to communicate, hey, here's the things we have coming up that isn't like Destiny 2 or it, or it isn't the 2016 expansion pack. Because otherwise, it seems like there's this gaping chasm between the Taken King's content and something in the future yeah which is a total unknown which is fine you know we don't they don't have to you know deliver this uh powerpoint slide deck that says here's the plan for destiny for the next 10 years you know <laughs> nobody's expecting that but it's kind of like all right i've gone through all this content now and i know i played destiny when i play it i play it very hard so i i get through the stuff very fast <laughs> but i don't always play destiny but when i do i do hard. it hard um, 
but so I know I'm in like this 1% of people that have just blown through this content very quickly. But how do you balance all of that? I think is going to be Bungie's challenge in 2016. Yeah. So re- really interesting to see what they're they're going to do. Well, um, and the, like this announcement sort of justifies their their claim for a need for a live team. This makes sense oh, with absolutely. that model. Yeah. 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 So um, and uh, last news story here that I missed last week. And I'm so mm-hmm. very sorry. Shadow Complex Remaster uh, was announced, and also it's out now on PC for free. Yeah, yeah. I got a weird what should we call it? An, an email from I think Epic Games about that. Go claim your copy. Yeah, like, what? The what now? The so, Shadow Complex. I already own that. What do you want? <laughs> so if you want to play it uh, on PC, unfortunately for the moment, you have to download the Epic Games Launcher. Which mm-hmm. I need one of those apparently. Yeah, um, you do. You can download it for free. You should play uh, Shadow Complex. It's really it's a great, good game. and it's even better for free. Mm-hmm. Uh, it will be coming out on PS4 and Xbox One here in 2016. Uh, no real news um, about what's going on, uh, sort of time-wise for that one. But if you yeah. haven't played it, it's a really great Metroidvania. If you haven't played any Metroidvanias, it's probably a pretty good starting point. Mm-hmm. Uh, between this and Symphony of the Night are, are probably your, your good entry points. Um, Dimebag315 in chat says, no, we need a part two. It would be really nice if this would be, hey, remember Shadow Complex? And yeah. in three, they announced part two. Yeah, I think that's what they're doing here. I think they're trying to test the waters and see what the interest <laughs> level is still. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think if it's high enough, if you go and download that EA Games launcher... Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you'll get a second part. If you pay your protection money. Exactly. You oh, at least hit by the You know what? At least, I feel at dirty. least it's just a download. It's not like a, it's not like a, you're actually throwing money their way. So It, it will be not free after some point. And yeah. after that point, it will show up on Steam. Yeah. So, which is also fine. It's probably going to be less than 10 bucks. If it's more mm-hmm. than $10, I don't know. Um, yeah. The game originally wasn't more than $10, was it? No, uh, but that was... You know, that was during the part of uh, Xbox uh, Live Arcade on 360. Remember where it was like, arcade games are 5 bucks. Yeah. Well, now they're 10 Now yeah. they're 15 Now they're 20 I'm so sorry. You yeah. know, like, yeah. as, as they kept getting bigger and more complex, it was sort of like, how's oh, 5 more bucks? Is that remember is when okay? you, Remember when there was a size limit on those things? Oh, yeah, yeah. Were, like 200 megs? <laughs> mm-hmm. Ah, the old days. Ugh, crazy. Uh, all right, let's go over to email. Email. What's up? Email. Uh, <laughs> Justin, uh, aka T Bomb Rocks, writes in uh, our only email this week. Uh, says, This is my second time writing into the podcast. Thank you. Please right, write in thank more. Thank you. Yeah. I really appreciate the weekly content to help me through my workouts. Uh, first, I wanted to thank Nobs for his recommendation on the Xbox One Elite controller. Best Buy had them in stock today and was lucky enough to bring one home. It's easily the next accessory purchase uh, I've ever made. Or, sorry, it's easily the best accessory purchase I've ever made next to the Astro A50s. Well worth the price. Nice. Uh, yeah, there. It's something special. I, I can't wait for you guys to put, get one in your hands and be like, oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, I, it. It sounds like one of those things where you hold it and you're like, oh, yes, okay. Got it. Now I understand. You know, like a baby. Right. <laughs> I'm so oh, happy I'm I spent $500 yeah. to get yeah. this Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have two questions this week. Uh, number one, what's your favorite gaming accessory you've purchased? Ooh. Oh, boy. Um, Xbox One Elite controller. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there you go. I don't buy a lot of accessories lately. Maybe my, like ps2 memory card adapter for my ps3 because i lended that out to so many people yeah it, like paid for itself because it it when the ps3 came out everyone's like wait how do i get these things in a, it doesn't have a port so they a couple weeks later they're like oh yeah we're coming out with this thing and it was yeah. just literally you plug in the ps2 memory card in the front of it the end of it is usb and the ps3 just sorts it out I lended okay. that out to like four or five people, so that that paid for itself uh, pretty easily. Uh, I would have to say I, I, I'm going to send you a, a picture here. I'm going to put it in chat. Um, this is called the Ideazon Zboard Fang. 
Uh, is and it the, sounds crazy. The worst uh, name for anything ever, basically. It is, but okay. this was oh, yeah. this was a gamepad that I purchased, uh, ex- uh, like with the intention of just playing WoW with it. Because right. I mean, look at that thing. That that's all the buttons you need for WoW. <laughs> uh, that is everything you need for WoW. But this turned out to be one of my favorite PC peripherals of all time. Uh, it is just this nice, compact little keypad that you can use, uh, and it had these really cool, like pre-mapped, um, like uh, it, it, like macros almost. It. Yeah, so you could load up an entire like different game profile. It's kind of like how Steam is doing with the uh, controller profiles now. Right. Uh, so you could download prof- profiles off the internet. They had like some pre-made ones. Oh, it's, it was so nice. I was so mad when mine finally gave up the ghost. Uh, I can't find one currently for a decent price. Uh, this is tied with uh, the Logitech MX518 mouse that I bought about eight years ago. <laughs> Boy, oh, people yeah. loved that mouse. That mouse was amazing, and Man. I've got the G400 now, uh, and it's good. Not quite it's as not good. Not the same. Not quite the same. <clears throat> you know, that, that reminds me of... Um, 90s PC gaming with the Gravis GamePad Pro. Oh, yeah. If anybody never played with this thing, the GamePad support on the PC up until the 360 controller came out was horrible. Yeah, it was real bad. And the Gravis GamePad Pro is the only thing that was universally supported for a long time. And basically, all it was was a Super NES controller. Mm -hmm. I don't think it had the the triggers like the shoulder buttons mm-hmm. but it did have a joystick you could screw into the middle of the d-pad oh. and it was basically that and like a start and select button and four buttons on it and it was great because almost everything supported it and it was like 20 bucks yeah and it hurt the hell out of your hand if you didn't have that that thing screwed into the uh the d-pad it was basically wow. just a hole that where your <laughs> thumb goes man. oh man yeah. yeah, crazy uh, stuff. I love, I love some interesting PC peripherals, though. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember I had some of those old, like the old school yokes that you'd have to screw onto your, whatchamacallit, your desk. like your a desk. U-clamp. It had like a U-clamp and it had the push in and push out and stuff yep. on it. Um, and then like I still I still always wanted to buy one of those Satek flight controllers that has the throttle. Oh. Yeah, it has like 25 really, buttons. Yeah. It, but it all lights up and it's beautiful. It has looking. a cover for launching missiles. Yes. Oh, yeah. So cool. Uh, NYC Badger in chat says 32X. That's a, that's a, that's a, I would almost say Sega CD. That I would consider those systems, though. I don't know if they, they, they technically no. are peripherals. Well, no, they have to hook into the Genesis. Yes. I guess. It needs, yeah. it needs a it needs right. mothership. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, his second question here is, with Grandia and Lunar being listed to come out on Steam in the near future, what classic RPGs or JRPGs could you uh, do you feel could also get ported to Steam? Wild Arms. Always going to be my oh, answer. That'd, yeah, that'd be a great one. Everyone needs to play that game. It's awesome. Um, it'd be nice to see more like console collections like dragon quest one through six you know final oh, fantasy cool. one through six not the yeah. new garbage versions either square <laughs> i saw what you did this week to final fantasy six monsters yeah. um you know it'd be kind of nice to see like sega did a couple of years ago with like their sega classics collections where it's like look 10 bucks you get 16 genesis games and they all have save states and they work with the 360 controller what else yeah do you, want? you know yeah. like <laughs> That's all you want. Ten bucks, get a couple of games that are, they're just the original game, and mm-hmm. you know if you can get like Dragon Quest one through six, Final Fantasy one through six, you know Breath of Fire one through four, you know like yeah. some of these early game collections, so you don't have to go emulate them, you don't have to go do this stuff, and it it gives people an easy thing to say. You know we had someone write into um, uh, Pup uh, for the last episode saying like, hey, I want to play all the Final Fantasy games in order. Which version should I play? And that so, is like, a complex question. Uh, and it's complex. He's like, all right, for this one, play the GBA version. But for this one, play Super NES. But for that one, there's this one collection that happened. And it's sort of like, if you just yeah. had all those on Steam, it's like, just pick up this pack on Steam. They're all fine. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's you'll get the fine versions of them. And you don't have to mess around with anything too much. Yeah, even even Chrono Trigger. It's like, well, what version of that do I play? The DS one. Well, yeah, you play the DS one, but like you got yeah. somebody who doesn't have a DS for some reason. Get a DS. Get Chrono yeah. Trigger. It's cheap. Yeah. Yeah. The, the other versions are not as good. 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's a, that's an easy one. Yeah. Well, um, the easy answer to that is also just don't play the PS One version. That's the most important one. Yeah. Is don't play the PS One version. My God, the loading times. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah, you remember that that wasn't that was the thing. Like it, that didn't matter then because you didn't know any better. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you had the Super NES One. It's sort of like, well, this is slower, but it's on my PS One, so it's okay. It has all these new yeah. cutscenes. Just put all that stuff on the DS version. Yeah. So. Uh, all right, that's all of our email this week. Yeah. Uh, thank you very <laughs> much, everyone, for writing in. If you'd like to visit us, you can do so at tvgp.tv. Email us tvgpfans at gmail.com. Tweet us at tvgp. Uh, everything else on the right-hand side of the map. and uh, Map. The page. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm not not trying to do knobs this section here. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, but speaking of, uh, of everything else on the page... Um, Please, uh, we're going to be recording our 2016 predictions episode next week. Um, so please go in the forums and put your predictions in. We'll t- if you put them in there, they show up on the show. Yep. So get them in there. And we'll also talk about the wildly inaccurate stuff we talked about in 2015. So oh, God. you want us to talk about <laughs> your wildly inaccurate predictions very gently. We're not going to make fun of you. I think uh, I'm going to predict the same thing I've done the last two years. Maybe. Probably, and, and it's got to really, be right one of these times. I got to be like a, I got to at least get my clock, my clock medal. That's I'm right twice a year. <laughs> TikTok, yeah, so TikTok. so go in there, put in some predictions. They'll show up on the show. It's always a great time. We love them very much. All right, and don't forget to join the forums. Please mark yourselves on the map. Join us for our week of game night. Uh, Monday night is uh, Starfield. 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 <laughs> Star Starfield Wars Battle, Battle Thing. Front. <laughs> Battle Thing. Uh, as Monday night, 10 p.m. EST on the Xbox One. Uh, Tuesday is Destiny. Wednesday, Rocket League. Yep. Thursday, Steam Game Night. And the rest of the weeks are up. The rest of the days are up to you. And just find us, play some games. Yep. Uh, current TVGP Game Club game is Remember Me. That came out on PS3, 360, and I believe PC, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I, I, I have it on Steam, it. so it came out on okay, PC. Okay, cool. It's on Steam right now. It is, yeah. Uh, looking forward to that. That's actually, um, so you've heard us talk about Life is Strange. The company that made Life is Strange actually made Rem- Remember Me. So I'm sort of really interested to go back and see what they it's were like doing a, before Life is Strange. crazy third-person beat-em-up shooter game. Rhythm game. Oh, yeah, very strange. Yeah. Very weird, uh, very interested. I actually got it downloading right now, so. Yeah. Woo! Uh, and last but not least, it is with a heavy heart that I must announce that this is the Hannah's very last show as a regular uh, chair member, chair mm-hmm. person, uh, chair filler. <laughs> <laughs> chair <laughs> That's seat mean. filler. Yeah. That's really all I've been. Screen yeah, for the last four years, just filling a seat. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, congratulations to the Hannah. He and his wife are, are starting a family here very shortly and, uh, the schedules unfortunately aren't going to work out. Uh, mm-hmm. but I wanted to give, uh, the Hannah, the floor here to kind of, uh, talk crap about us before he leaves. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, just to sort of sum it up, um, you know, the wife and I are a kid, as you can see, if you're watching the video version of this, my surroundings have changed a little bit. We turned my office into the nursery, which is... Fantastic. It's a really nice little Pixar theme, um, which is a lot of fun. Uh, I'm super excited. Uh, we're about four weeks, five days out from actually having the baby. So uh, it's a really exciting time. Uh, but basically what it comes down to is uh, right now my wife and my dog are hiding up in the bedroom upstairs, and that's just not going to be feasible uh, going forward. Uh, so for the time being, uh, I won't be able to be a regular chairperson here. Um, if there's ever you know a magical like alignment where it's like, oh, well, my wife and my kid are out and I have a few <laughs> free hours, you know, between three and six on a Sunday. I love they have to be out. Like, yeah. <laughs> or, you know, it's the just... only mystical way this can happen is if no one is here. Yeah. And the dog, too. I it's need my, silence. It's my secret shame. But no, it's, yeah, it's one of those things where it's, you know, just not feasible to have a child in the house that is, you know, going crazy while I'm trying to record a podcast. So, you know, I want to be able to spend the time with my family, too, and not have to work around all you know this crazy stuff too um but whenever i can i'm gonna try and make it uh whenever that's feasible and uh you know i just want to say it has been an absolute pleasure doing this show with you guys um almost every week uh (laughs) you know um life happens 
<laughs> it, it does, and it was, uh, you know, it was such an honor uh, the first time to be able to do this show with you guys uh, when you first picked me. Literally picked me just out of the community because, uh, you know, I have like 4,000 posts on the forum. Uh, Pulled you out of the AAA league. <laughs> it, literally, it was, it was one of those, like, it was like the last Starfighter. <laughs> it's the only way I can describe it. Nice. It was like, it was like, yeah, this guy seems pretty cool. Let's have him on the show. And it was sort of just like, it was, it was really awesome. Uh, and it's been a really excellent experience. Um, you know, spending time with you guys and getting to know you guys, and you know, just crashing talking. Your wedding, yeah, crashing my wedding. <laughs> yeah, Nox crashing Nox Hannah's my wedding, wedding, which was amazing. Yeah, uh, and actually uh, another uh, community member, Olimu, crashed my yeah. wedding as well. Uh, there he go. was there for a little while. <laughs> um, but I've I have met some really uh, incredible people through the TVGP community, um, and obviously I'm going to remain a part of the community. I'm going to, you know, I, I'm actually kind of just excited to listen to the show again. <laughs> uh, I I just I have this I can't listen to myself. Like I've I've already experienced this from one end. Trying to experience it from another end is just going to yeah. be weird. But like I'm excited to like I want to listen to the predictions episode this year yeah and like, just be like oh man i'm gonna be surprised by it it's gonna be really nice um but yeah i mean as a fan of the show first and you know uh a, a cast member second uh it is just it's been an incredible experience uh that i just really can't say thank you to you guys enough and, uh, and, and you'll still be doing game club right yeah, so I'll, yeah. I, I may miss January. Uh, that things time. are happening. So but, you know, I, <laughs> things are happy. People are coming into the world. It's mass hysteria. Yeah. Yeah. So like January might happen. Probably not, but we'll see. Uh, and uh, for you know Scott and Jay Z who are listening, don't worry. I'll show you how to run the live stream before it happens. Yeah, it's it's not as hard as it looks. It's, it really is. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jay Z probably already knows how to do it. Um, and you know, once you know, after a couple months, after you know everything gets settled, I'm going to try and you know get back up with the game club cast. After about so. 18 years, get yeah, back on game club. <laughs> yeah, when you guys are on episode like 2,000 or so, yeah, you I know, wonder what we'd be back. on. Yeah. Oh man, that'd be crazy. Maybe uh, yeah. things will get a little grayer. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm already starting to get some gray in my beard. I'm so pumped. Yes. Are you kidding me? It's, gonna look it's so not going to cool. go gray. It's just going to disappear. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it, just, it just doesn't stop. I mean. <laughs> So if you want to donate some of that, that'd be great. Now yeah. we're talking about our hair for those listening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah. thank you very much, Hannah. And, and this certainly won't be the last time you see him. You know, keep keep an eye on Game Club, and he'll be back on the show. So he and always I, has an open chair. I will be in the forums, of course. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, the Discord chat room. Don't forget about that. Yeah, come uh, join. If, if you need a link to that, feel free to check the forums. It should be there. Uh, actually, boss, I'll send you a link to put on the right hand side of the page. Perfect. <laughs> All yeah, right. Nice and easy. So All thank right. you to the whole community. Thank you to you guys. Uh, and just, I, I will see you soon. Yes. And thank you for listening. <laughs> and we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you soon. Uh, all right. Uh, uh, I feel like there should be a song playing right now. <laughs> Some Sarah McLaughlin song. It's been a long road <laughs> from here to there. <laughs> Uh, and is leaving, but he'll be back soon. <laughs> All right, before we get blocked on Twitch for our own song, um, <laughs> I have four titles. Okay, what do you uh, got? It's a pretty good punching bag. Okay, didn't, you, didn't catch that. You one. gotta work the U. You gotta work the U. Just the letter U. Yeah. Uh, Farm to table, Final Fantasy VII, which <laughs> I really like. <laughs> And Starfield Battle Thing. <laughs> oh, I kind of like Starfield Battle Thing. I like Starfield, yeah, Starfield Battle, Battle Thing a lot, pretty too. Great. Yeah. I, I think that's kind of got to be it. Uh, it's I, between Farm to Table Final Fantasy VII or Starfield Battle Thing. Starfield, Starfield Battle, Battle Thing, thing is so thing punchy. Is a little bit punchier. Yes. Oh, and it's, it's a call back to the beginning of that. It's a lot. It works on a lot of levels. I'm just going to circle it. Do you yeah. have any titles? Uh, Ooh, yeah, I got what? some. Oh, I thought you were uh, talking to me. No, like, I thought it was too. To uh, <laughs> I have a few here. Uh, I, I, I did just know that chair. Was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was part of the game. Uh, gratuitous, dirty Star Wars talk. So a dirty. raw nerve at the dentist's office. Uh, you need to fight some stormtroopers. Uh, work in the U. Checkerboarded. Uh, it's like building a robot. All the way up to Satan. Uh, I need a life bar. Uh, when I play, I play it hard. 
It needs the, <laughs> it needs the mothership and Starfield battle thing. I think we have to pick Starfield battle thing. Though. We have to. It's I just, just too like, good. I don't always play, but what I do, I play, I play hard. hard. The hardest. The most interesting gamer in the world. So right. much. This guy right here. Yeah. yeah. All right. Starting in three, two, one. This is That Video Game Podcast, episode 425 for December 14th, 2015. Starfield Battle Thing. Suck it, Luke! In a galaxy sometime, somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Damn it, Hannah. <laughs> Leaving on a bang. Yep. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, folks. For... Good night. Yep. See you later. <laughs> thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, the Hannah will be back in two weeks for the top ten. Yes. Um... Nobs and I will be back next week for our last live stream of the year. Yeah. Don't forget, though. Don't worry. We got episodes planned until we come back. Yeah. And worry. and the, my ghost will be uh, inhabiting Boston and speaking my predictions. Naturally. Yes. As like it always do. does. Yeah. Every yeah, year. You, yeah. you don't want you don't want me to read it because I'll I'll mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't remember the predictions every episode every year. So, I'm, you know, out of body experience. Exactly. All right. Thank you very much, everyone, for watching, and we'll see you next week.